Master, why do you speak in parables whenever a crowd is near? The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you. But to others it comes by means of parables, so they may look but not see, and listen but not understand. What do the parables of the Bible hide? The parable of the net. Jesus, glory be to him, used parables to address his close disciples and the Christians in general, where he says, Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in the baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What is meant by letting down the neck is the process of gathering the chosen ones and screening and making a thorough examination to the rest of the people who claim to be followers of Christ. For when Christ declares his new returning, and embarks on establishing the actual kingdom of God, the angels of God will start gathering the chosen ones from all over the earth, just as mentioned in the following verse. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. The process of gathering the elects to help Christ in realizing the divine promise shall involve a sorting and singling people out to make a distinction between the good and the bad, the true believers and the hypocrite, and the good and the evil. When time comes and the Father's will is to condemn the world through his returning Christ, it will be fair enough for every person to choose which side to take, the camp of Christ that represents the right and justice, or the camp of Satan that represents falsehood and oppression. Whoever chooses to be on the side of Christ's enemies, who are the churchmen that have changed the law, or governments who oppress the downtrodden people, is definitely from the camp of Satan that will be thrown into blazing furnace and eternal chastisement. As for whoever chooses to be fully committed to the teachings of Christ down to every details, and foreseek submission to every confession, church, or sect shall definitely be from the camp of good, righteous, and the right, and he shall be rewarded with eternal heaven with the prophets and saints. Jesus described this horrific scene in his sacred Bible. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. The king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. And he goes on until he says, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you are cursed, into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. However, this experience is so difficult in this time of ours that we'll witness the return of Jesus Christ and the realization of more signs of time. For this means survival when man chooses the side of Christ, the owner of the rightful message, even if against his own family, people, relatives, all for the sake of salvation. This needs the help of the Father so that the man can save himself and lose the world and not the other way around. Just as Jesus said, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Therefore, we have to look for our salvation and choose one of the two camps that we believe is the right according to this parable, so as to be accepted by God and to please Him, and so that His Son loves us, abiding by His Bible, modeling after His sent saints, being merciful to the weak and poor, respecting the elderly, and separating love and peace on our land, 
just as Christ and his disciples had done.